Okay, so I decided to do a little podcast um, based on this movie that I actually love. I know I reviewed it loads of times, but I wanted to do a full death review of this movie. And of course, it is Kate and Leopold. Um, wow. What can I say about this movie before I start this podcast? Um, it is the most cheesiest, weirdest romantic comedy I've ever seen in my entire life. But I actually love this film. So anyway, I'm going to talk to you guys about the movie itself. What did like what I liked about the film, what I didn't like about the movie, um, and I'll, along with the characters as well. So I know how many parts is going to be in this thing. So anyway, this is part one out of how many. So let's get in. Okay. So this movie came out in 2001 and it's directed by James Mangold, who of course done the likes of Logan, The Wolverine, uh, Walk the Lion, Girl Interrupted, Identity, that James Mangold. And this movie, of course, stars Hugh Jackman. Yes, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine himself. He's in this movie um, opposite Meg Ryan, uh, Brecken Meyer from Clueless, and Leo Schreiber, who was in Scream 3, I think. Scream 3? Scream 2? I think it's in Scream 2. And also has uh, Bradley Whiteford, who plays a villain in practically every second thing he's in, <laughs> I swear to God. Um... So, yeah, I'm going to start with a story, so let's get into it. So, there is going to be spoilers throughout the entire thing, so let's get into it. Okay, so the story starts off in 1876, and we see this guy called Leopold, Duke of Albany, played by Hugh Jackman, who is a... You could say he's sort of like a, a womanizer, because every woman wants to be with him, and they want to marry him. And, of course, he travelled from Sussex, I think, in 1876 to New York of 1876 because he wants to do he wants he's there basically with his uncle Millard played by Paxton Whitehead who has since passed away and he of course is forcing Leopold to marry a American woman who has a lot of money and of course he is like oh there is no way I am going to get married just for the sake of it even though I am depleted just depleted apparently if you know what I mean. Um, because it's basically a depleted means he's literally broke. He's no money at all because both his parents died. But anyway, before I go into this story more, right, I want to clarify something, right? And it's, of course, got to do with Leopold. So Leopold, Duke of Albany, is actually a real person. And he actually died at the age of 30 from haemophilia. Yeah. So James Mangold did not do his research at all. When he was doing this movie. So anyway. Um, he of course died like. Because he was Queen Victoria's son basically. And Queen Victoria had some sort of, some sort of disease. And he picked it up from her. And the real Leopold. Was actually married to a woman called Helen. Who was like a princess or something. And um, yeah. That's just to get out of the way. He was a real person. Anyway back to the movie. So of course there's this big ball. That's um, coming on. Uh, that night in 1876 and Leopold is dancing with different women including Miss Tree played by Kirsten Shaw in her film debut and his uncle Millard like I said he wants Leopold to marry Miss Tree of Connecticut that's her title basically her title so he's like looking at looking at Juwan as if to say oh sweet mother of God do I have to marry her do I literally have to marry this woman? Because me and her would not see eye to eye at all. So he's there anyway. Now, there is two different versions of this movie, okay? So you've got the director's coach, which kind of empathise the fact that Leopold is Stuart Bezer's great-great-grandfather. But in the theatrical coach, it's not mentioned at all. And that's what makes the movie sort of choppy, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to kind of go with both versions anyway so let's continue so like i said there uh stuart bezer played by leo schreiber he of course is there at the party where leopold is attending and um he of course is like oh who is this guy and why what does he want from me so he of course leopold decides to follow stuart and he says to him well who are you and of course stuart backs out he chickens out by the way and of course he runs away and Leopold has to try and follow him to the Brooklyn to the Brooklyn Bridge 
And when he's there in the Brooklyn Bridge, he's like, oh my God, this guy's trying to kill himself because people seem to kill themselves in a Brooklyn Bridge. Don't ask. <laughs> so, of course, Stuart is trying to advise, is trying to like advise Leopold and says to him, oh, look, it's okay, buddy. Let me go. And, of course, he uses pepper spray on Leopold. Leopold, of course, gets stung in the eyes of peppermint spray. And, of course, both him and Stuart fall down into the Brooklyn Bridge in the river and that's it. I hear this bell ringing and that's it. So then we cut to, if you watch the theatrical court, it cuts to Meg Ryan's character who was stuck in an elevator that same night in 2001. Or if you watch the director's court, we actually see her at a test screening where she's watching a romantic comedy and the director of the film, James Mangold, shows up and he says to Kate, oh, you're stuck in a life of cinema and and my grand's like, oh yeah, I'm the main protag- I'm not the main protagonist in a motion picture, which she sort of is, by the way. She's kind of like throwing a fourth wall joke in the director's court. Um, and of course she gives out stink about Char- about not Charlie Stewart. Apologies, Stewart, who of course is Kate's ex boyfriend, who of course was the guy that Leopold followed through eighteen seventy six, and now Leopold is in two thousand and one. So anyway, Kate, of course decides to eavesdrop and she sees her boyfriend her ex-boyfriend and he's, she's like oh i saw her and he's like oh what are you talking about it's a him and kisha wanted she's like oh i don't care what it is and um, you can tell me you can pick up a transvestite i don't care and like i said there he says oh yeah it's a him and kisha wondran and of course he explains to kate that he found a crack in the fabric of time um uh, because stewart by the way is a Physiest, I think. He's a physiest, meaning he's obsessed with time travel. And um, Kate doesn't want to hear of it because she's a right bitch, I'm not going to lie. She was a total bitch throughout the entire film until the second and third act. So, of course, Kate's like, oh, yeah, I blew my best years in you. And he's like, oh, yeah, those are the best. And he says, oh, yeah, you get your palm pilot in the morning because he has her palm pilot. So, the next day, anyway, um, Leopold wakes up and there's a TV on. And it's showing this thing like a bubble or something. And here's me going, what the actual fuck is this? And he's there going, Otis, Otis, Otis. And he, of course, goes out to Stuart going, oh, my uncle won't pay you a cent. And my steak, like, pal, pal pie. So where the hell am I? And, of course, Stuart is trying to explain to Leopold that he is now in 2001. Because Leopold accidentally travelled to 2001 through a fabric and tie Thanks to the Brooklyn Bridge. And the river because there's this chime apparently and the chime works by opening up the portal i know it's really over over the top but trust me so of course stewart is like oh yeah uh leopold is grand i'm gonna help you out we have to stay in the apartment and that same day stewart forgot himself that the elevator stopped working because leopold is now in the present day instead of the past and Stuart, of course, gets into a bit of a bit of a predicament, and now he is stuck in hospital. Stuart throughout the entire film, uh, which makes room for the two main characters to actually fall in love with one another. Um, uh, so of course that day anyway, uh, Leopold and Kate finally meet, and he says to her, "Oh, I was warned about you," and she's like, "Oh yeah, what pre tells that say that you're dangerous and you're hardly look at?" I take a short career woman. She's like, yeah, market research. She's like, oh, fine application market research. Perfect film in mind. And she's like, you're tripping. Um, and of course, she finds Bart, who was outside of the apartment. And she says to Leopold, oh, are you coming? He's like, I beg your pardon. He's like, come on, let's go. And of course, he decides to go outside for the first time in his life since he came to 2001. So, yeah, stick around for part two.